Welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. Back in the day, there was a saying that went something like, if you want your voodoo to go faster, just give it more CPU. The seemingly uncanny ability of the Voodoo 2 and Voodoo 3 GPUs to just keep providing more frame rate when paired with faster and faster CPUs felt like eldritch magic back in the late 90s. The video card seemed aptly named. Nowadays, of course, we know this phenomenon as being CPU bottlenecked, but back when 3D accelerators were new, I don't think anyone could even grasp the concept that their shiny new $1,000 Pentium 2 CPU upgrade wasn't actually fast enough to saturate a Voodoo 3. Humble as this Voodoo 3 might be these days, I want to find out the limits of its scaling capabilities. How much CPU is too much CPU for this Voodoo? That's right, today we're looking at Voodoo scaling. All set? Bottoms up. Before we get started, let's do a little back-of-the-napkin math. The card I'll be using for testing is my PCI Voodoo 3 2000. The Voodoo 3, or Avenger as 3D Effects called it internally, was the last of the traditional SST-based 3D accelerators from 3D Effects, using a synchronous architecture of texture mapping units commanded by a frame buffer interface chip. Well, on the original Voodoo graphics and its follow-up, the Voodoo 2, these functions existed as, as discrete chips on the board. With the Voodoo Banshee and the Voodoo 3, however, they became integrated into a sim single surface mount chip. Regardless of their packaging, however, the component we're interested in for this comparison is the frame buffer interface. Since SST is synchronous and single pipelined, it outputs one pixel per clock. The Voodoo 3 2000 runs at 143 MHz, and that means it outputs 143 million pixels per second. Now, this is all theoretical maximums, but if we take the resolution we're going to be testing at, 640 by 480, and find the number of pixels that is, we get a little over 307,000 pixels per frame. This is super optimistic and assumes no overdraw or alpha blending is happening, but if we divide our total pixel output from the Voodoo 3, 143 million per second, by the number of pixels in each frame, 307, 200, we get 465 frames per second? There is no way it's going to do that. We're going to run into PCI bandwidth limitations bef way before we get anywhere close to that. Not a chance. But again, that's theoretical, assuming there's no alpha blending happening, and we're also only drawing the finished final pixels in each frame, which doesn't happen. Alpha blending is everywhere in games, and 3D engines overdraw all the time, even when they're trying not to. Take Quake 3, for example. Quake 3's most basic graphics, the walls and floor, have at least the base texture and a light map texture. So immediately, you're using up the Voodoo's two texture mapping units just on the wall. If we have, well, say, one of the fancy new shader textures doing its thing on the wall, maybe a base texture, an animated intermediate texture, and a transparent top texture? Well, now we have five textures to render, and only two texture mapping units, so we're going to need three passes just to render this wall, and each pass we use after the first one halves our max frame rate. So now we're down from 460 to 230 to 115-ish? That dropped fast, and we're just rendering a wall. Let's say we fire a rocket towards that wall. So now there's the transparent flame cone of the, wa of the rocket, and all these pixels will need another pass to do the alpha blending for them. And there's a smoke trail coming out of the rocket, so we'll need one additional pass to render each of the smoke particle sprites from back to front in order to get the blending right. So, Quake 3 isn't looking very promising for her little voodoo, but how will Quake 1 and Quake 2 fare? Well, I'm going to show you. First, with some gameplay snippets, followed by delicious bar graphs. But, before we jump in, I want to briefly talk about my testing methodology. I tested on four platforms across six CPUs, ranging from my Media GX at 150MHz all the way up to my Athlon XP 3200 Plus at 2.2GHz on a 400MTS FSB. So, we have an extremely broad spectrum of late 90s, early 2000s CPU performance here. 
All tests were conducted on Windows 98 SE using the last official 3DFX Voodoo, Dri Voodoo 3 driver version 1.07. Okay, enough talk. Let's dive in. So, my thoughts about the benchmark results. Uh, first of all, yes, the Cyrix is desynced during demo playback in Quake 1 and Quake 2. I ran the demo in real time first to capture for this b-roll, but it looks like the platform's lack of Busmaster DMA drivers for the IDE controller meant that loading assets and sound clips desynchronized the system relatively to the others. Uh, I figured that if this was going to happen, it was going to happen on Quake 3, just given the extremely low performance of the Cyrixes, but Quake 3 does a monstrous amount of pre-caching at load time, so the two Cyrixes actually synced up perfectly with the other systems and were quite the happy little slideshows, comparatively. This benchmark run really hammers home the fact that I need some slower Pentiums in my stable. While the Cyrixes make great stand-ins for slow Pentiums in most things, the platforms are different and react differently during testing, and the only way I'm going to get genuine test results from chips like the Pentium 75 and the Pentium 133 is to actually have those chips on hand. My second takeaway, I, I can't explain the performance of the Pentium 3 in Quake 2. I expected more from it, considering the excellent showing from the Pentium 2. I don't know what happened there. My particular example is a Katmai Pentium 3 with the backside level 2 cache, so maybe that was limiting performance in Quake 2? I, I don't know. I retested it several times and it kept giving me similar numbers each time, so I'm not at all sure what happened there. What I do know is that I need something between my Pentium 3 and my Athlon if I want to do GPU scaling comparisons like this in the future. A 750 or 800 MHz Pentium 3 might not be a bad addition to my fleet here. Also, about that Athlon, <laughs> that was supposed to be an Athlon 1000, but my only operational socket A motherboard right now decided to run it at 1333. Yeah, you know, just an automatic 33% overclock, so that's cool. Sadly, it did not survive this predicament and released its magic smoke as I was attempting to grab B-roll of it, running at the wrong frequency. 
It was a model with the 100 megahertz frontside bus, so I found a version with the 133 megahertz frontside bus in the hopes that my board will run that one correctly, so I guess we'll see. Anyway, hopefully you found this comparison interesting and maybe even helpful. I definitely want to compare the Voodoo 3 against other GPUs of the time period to see if we're leaving performance on the table with CPUs like the Pentium 3, for example. Because I know I'm leaving performance on the table with the Athlon XP, for example. Because if I plug in my Radeon 9800 Pro and do the same time demo, at 1280 by 1024 and 32-bit color, by the way, I get over 200 FPS from the machine. Uh, here's what that looks like, by the way. So if you watched to the end here, thank you so much. Uh, if you like this kind of weird, obsolete computer content, give that subscribe button a boop, and I'll put more weird stuff on your homepage every week, uh, assuming the algorithm does what it's supposed to do. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great night.